everyone. Welcome to Play Hokey with me. My name is Roz and today I want to share with you another gift card holder pattern. Uh, this was a request from a subscriber. Thank you Sherry for the fun idea. If you are already familiar with how to make the gift card holders, here is a timestamp to the main pattern. But if this is your first time, I'm going to first share the details on the hook, yarn, and measurements, the standard pattern for the gift card holder panels, then after the main pattern, I'll share how to seam the sides together. I did it a little bit differently with the Santa, but I'll be sure to share the other ways that you can do it. And then finally, a simple closure if you want to hide what is inside. If you're interested in these other patterns, I'll be sure to add a link in the description box below. Just click the little sign that says show me if you're on the computer or the gray arrow if you're on your phone. Okay, I think that's about it. So yeah, let's play some hooky. To get started, let's talk a little bit about the yarn and the hook size. For all of these patterns, I used a standard acrylic yarn in medium weight four. The required hook size is a five millimeter, but I would suggest that you go down to a four millimeter to make your stitches more condensed and tight. I actually used a 3.75 millimeter, but that's just because I had it close to hand and I like that size. A typical size for a gift card is about two by three and a half. I think these were two and a quarter by three and a half to be specific, but you get the idea. The card holders themselves, I made about three by four inches. We're going to do 10 single crochets across and then 14 rows high. For the gift card holder, we're going to make two sides. Start with a slip knot on your hook and we're going to chain 11. Skip the first chain from the hook and do a single crochet in the second chain. Followed by single crochets all the way across. Once you've reached the end, chain one and turn. Work in the very first stitch with a single crochet going through both loops at the top and continue across. Coming to the very last stitch of row two, insert your hook in both loops and row two is completed. Chain one, turn your work and continue this all the way up until you've done 14 rows. Before we get started, I just want to remind you guys that I would suggest to do your embroidery stitches and all of your attaching of pieces before you seam the two sides together. I find it's really difficult to do it after the fact. For the little hood attachment, it really doesn't matter though for that because I did this after it was all seamed together and I didn't have any problems. It's really up to you with that going to work on the front panel first and I'm just going to tell you the rows before we get started so you can have it in your mind as you're working. We're going to do seven rows of white, three of the skin color, one white, and three rows of the red. We're working in single crochets. Start with adding a slip knot to your hook, chain 11, skip the first chain from the hook, do a single crochet in the second chain from the hook and continue all the way down with single crochets, leaving you with 10 single crochets total. Make sure that you have 10 single crochets and when you are sure, go ahead and chain one, turn and continue on with single crochets until you've reached seven white rows. Once you've reached the end of row seven, before you finish that very last single crochet, we're going to transition to the skin color. With two loops on your hook, go ahead and wrap around your skin color and pull it through both loops. Chain one and turn. And now we're going to single crochet in that same space that you chained up one and continue on with your single crochets and we're going to do three rows of the skin color. 
Okay, and once you're on the very last single crochet on row three, right before you finish the single crochet, go ahead and finish it with your white. I just started another strand. I did not carry my yarn. Chain one, turn, and now do single crochets all the way across for the brim, just one row. And once you've come to the end of the row, before you finish that last single crochet, you know the drill. Bring in your next color and pull it through to start your next color transition. Chain one, turn. Now what we're going to do here is we're going to do three rows of red, but I'm going to do the very last row a little bit differently. So let's do our next two rows and then I'll explain when we get to row three. Okay, we've finished row two, and now I'm going to do something a little differently. I want to give the corners a little bit of a rounded edge. You can sort of see it here. Uh, it's not that noticeable, it's very subtle, but I was just trying to get a little bit of a curve happening on the top. So to do that, do not chain one, just go ahead and turn and do a slip stitch in that very first single crochet stitch. Now single crochet as you normally would, but when you get to the very last stitch on this row, do another slip stitch. So it's slip stitch, single crochet all the way across, and in the final stitch, do a slip stitch to finish. And in the final stitch, just a slip stitch. Okay, and at this point you can go ahead and tighten your sides and weave in the ends and we'll be ready to start decorating. And don't forget to make your back panel for your gift card holder. Let's go ahead and start with the mustache. We're going to be making this in one piece. It's two sides that are connected. This also is a great pattern if you're looking for a double leaf. Okay, start with a slip stitch. We're going to start with a chain five. One, two, three, four, five. In the second chain from the hook, start with a single crochet. In the next stitch, a half double crochet. Sorry guys, I know that's annoying. In the next stitch, a double crochet. And in the last stitch, let's do a single crochet. Yes, we're going all the way back down to a single crochet. Great. And in the same spot, let's do a slip stitch. And then chain five. One. Repeating what we just did, we're going to do a single crochet in the second chain from the hook. half double crochet, double crochet, and then in the very last chain here we're going to do a single crochet. Yes, we hear you, we hear you. Okay. And in that same space, go ahead and do a slip stitch, and then we are finished. Now, if you don't like this gap, that's not a problem. Go ahead and give yourself a nice long tail. That's what you're going to use to attach to the front of your face. But before I do that, I am going to tighten that little area up. There we go, much better. Okay, and as you can see, we have a tail on this side. Leave that tail that you started with 
and keep a nice long tail on the other side as well. That's what we'll be using to attach the mustache to the face. To make the nose, go ahead and start with a magic circle. If you don't like making magic circles, you can chain four, secure it with a slip stitch, and be sure to carry the tail, and then you can pull that tail to tighten that circle. And then when you're ready, go ahead and do four single crochets. Tighten your ring closed. Do not close with a slip stitch. We're just going to leave it just like this. This is going to be your nose. And then you can use these to attach to the face. To attach the mustache to the face, what I like to do is I have nine very visible V's here in the skin area. What I like to do is I like to find the fifth V and I like to take the two strands of yarn and go on each side of that V to attach. Let me show you what I mean. And then at this point, I'm going to continue on. I'm going to take my darning needle and I'm going to tack these into place so they don't move. And then I do the same thing for the nose. I just find where I want my nose to go. Pulling these two strands to the back, I do the same process. Once you have your nose and mustache in place, now it's time to add the eyes, and this is super easy. I just get a strand of black onto a tapestry needle, darning needle and I find where I want my eyes to go and use the little spaces here as a natural place to put my eyes. Just find where you like, and I wouldn't knot anything this way. If you don't like where you've placed it, you can do it again. I like to do two or three passes in the same spot. Two is pretty good, so I'm going to stop there. Double knot in the back. And repeat on the other side. I also like to give him white eyebrows, and so I just repeat the process. I get a white strand of yarn on my needle, and then above the eye, I just find a little spot Let's try there. Again, I don't knot anything just in case I want to pull it out and try again. And I go with two passes. You get the idea. And then for the mouth, same process. Get a little bit of red. Pull through. And then what I like to do is to keep that in place, I just come in back to the middle and secure it with just a little stitch 
to hold it in place. And then you can tie and make a knot like we've been doing with the other pieces. To make the hat portion, the little piece that you see sticking out from the side, you can see here we have a little triangle. We're going to start with a chain of five. And in the second chain from the hook, we're going to do a single crochet and continue all the way across. This will give you four single crochets. Chain one and turn. Now what we're going to do is we're going to skip that first stitch we're reducing to make the triangle. So we'll skip the first one and then do single crochets in the remaining three stitches. Okay, chain one, turn, and now skipping that first stitch, do single crochets in the remaining two stitches. Chain one, turn, skip that first stitch, do one single crochet, and then I like to chain one and turn, and then I like to do a slip stitch to finish. And now I take a tapestry needle and just go in and kind of fine tune that little edge there. Tightening things up where I see it needs it a little bit. Nothing fancy. And that looks pretty good to me, so I'm going to go ahead and weave in that end and call it done. To make a pom-pom, I get a spare strand of yarn here just for the piece to tie it together. And then using my two fingers, I do about 10 to 15 wraps. Big one. This won't make a very huge pom-pom, just a little one like this. If you do 20, it comes out super big like that, just to give you an idea. So 10 to 15 wraps is perfectly fine. Pull it off. And then do your best to tie in the center. Making a really tight knot. And then just cut all the loops. And then just give it a little bit of a trim. Anyway, there's a little pom-pom if you don't have one of those little crafty ones and you just take these two little strands and you can attach to your hat. To seam the two sides together, I'm going to do an invisible seam. For my other gift card holders, I did a slip stitch across, giving it a surface crochet appearance. I'll add a link in the cards here so you can see what I'm talking about. I decided not to do that with this one because I didn't like the colors, how it was looking. Whether I used red or white, it just wasn't working. So I decided to try an invisible seam for this pattern and I liked it a lot better. Going into the back, Give yourself a nice tail to weave in later. Coming into the red. Since it's red, I'm not too concerned about hiding it. Okay. Now at this point, what I'm going to do is a mattress stitch where I'm weaving back and forth. What I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be working on the inside portion of both panels, camouflaging the stitch and making it invisible. Just pick up a stitch on the inside. Go back across to the back panel. Okay, now we're moving into the whites and the creams here. So now I want to be a little bit better at camouflaging this red. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go in here and I'm going to pick up a stitch, but I'm picking up one that you can't see from the front.
going back over to the red. Back on the cream, I'm going to work back here. Back over to the red. Make sure you're staying lined up. And just continue all the way around. And again, if this is too time consuming, you don't have to do this. You can just do a nice surface crochet in one of those colors. And then finally, go ahead and stitch your piece on the back. And you're finished. There are several different ways that you can go about adding a little closure to your gift card holders. You can do something just with a spare piece of yarn, just tie a little bow, uh, either close to the edge so there's no peeking allowed, or a little bit higher if you want to hang it up in a tree. But one of my favorites is adding a little button to the back and doing a simple clasp. I just take a piece of yarn in a matching color, slide it through two loops at the top, tie it, and there you go, you have a little button clasp. This can also serve as a hanger as well. I hope you enjoyed these patterns, and if you did, be sure to check out these other gift card holders.